direct tributary of um, Lake Michigan. So just a little bit of the history, and again, I think Travis covered some of this, um, but there was a lot of uh, history um, of uh, monitoring by the DEQ starting in the 70s through the 90s, um, and in 96, it was uh, officially put on the, what's called the Grail 3D list for not attaining water quality standards, and that has to do with supporting aquatic life. Um, both fish and other aquatic life, and the main reason was phosphorus. Uh, Travis already talked about the total banks were really low. Um, so these were the numbers. Um, in 1999, when the TMDL was set, it was determined that there was about 138,000 pounds of phosphorus per year entering Lake Makatawa, and the goal that the DEQ set as a sustainable amount was 55,000 pounds. So that's where our 70 percent reduction comes. And it was determined at that point that 90% was coming from non point sources. So those are sources that are already brought to the landscape and are delivered to the stream by stormwater. Um, as opposed to point sources, which are pipes that are directly discharging wastewater into the streams. We have three point sources of phosphorus in the watershed um, the Zealand wastewater treatment plant, the Holland wastewater treatment plant, and the Asian Japanese. And they are operating well below their permitted limits. So there's not really anything we can do with point sources or <coughs> with the non-point sources. Um, so this is just kind of a pictorial representation of what these problems cause. Um, too much sediment. If you uh, live in the Manitou watershed or you drive around after a rain, all the streams look like farm milk. And it's because of the erosion, whether it's coming off of construction sites, farm fields, or in stream, that's what's making the, the water turn brown. Um, and you know that phosphorus is heavily bound to soil, so whatever the soil is eroded away is likely carrying phosphorus. When it ends up in Lake Mac, we end up um, sometimes with the algae blooms because of the phosphorus. Um, a lot of the time, depending on the rainfall events, Lake Mac will be brown because of all that sediment that's coming in. Two summers ago, um, 2012, if anybody took a trip out um, July, August, that's where this bright green photo came from. So we didn't have a lot of rain, so the sediment could settle out. There all that phosphorus was there. And so the algae took advantage of that, and then we ended up with a lot of green label. Um, but before the algae bloom, you can see a lot in many places because that sediment settled out. It takes about five, six months for water to cycle through the lake, so it can clear up fairly quickly in terms of um, getting that sediment out, but there's always more coming in. So the Magnetow Watershed Project was started in response to that total mix of daily load. Um, so it really is our responsibility to come up with a management plan and implement that management plan to try to meet those goals and reducing phosphorus. Um, the project is located at the Magnetow Area Coordinating Council, which is a metropolitan planning organization that works with the communities of Holland and Zealand and the surrounding areas on regional issues, primarily transportation. So that was already established, that working relationship with the regional area that includes the Magatawa watershed. So that's why the watershed project was placed there as opposed to with another entity. Um, and then in 2003, um, the EPA through the state of Michigan um, required communities that met certain criteria to have permits to discharge stormwater. So then we also took on that responsibility of providing technical assistance to our communities to do that. So we, we still do that today. We work with six permittees um, to help them maintain compliance with the, their stormwater permits, and that's in um, urban areas. So what's been done since 1999? Um, a lot of what we do is just increasing public awareness letting people know what a watershed is, first of all, what the problems are, and what they can do to get involved. Um, so a lot of it has come evolved through time as far as using more social media now, Facebook, um, our website, I think we're still kind of getting new into that, we have a whole lot there. Do a lot of uh, public education programs in schools, with adult groups, um, with elected officials, um, and other 
groups of people. We do have a storm drain stenciling program in the urban areas. We'll try to raise awareness of the fact that storm drains are connected directly to the water, but they do not um, go to the treatment plant where um, water is treated. Whatever goes down the storm drain ends up in our lake. Um, there's been a lot of research and monitoring efforts, primarily from Hope College and also Grand Valley. Um, so we have a lot of data that we can use to help target um, where the problems are, what needs to be done, and Travis talked about some of that earlier. Um, and then really what we want to see happen is the best management practices on the ground. So there's been a lot of demonstration sites that have been put in throughout the watershed, both for agricultural practices and urban practices. And those are available so people can go and see what does a rain garden look like? And when Mark does a cover crop plot, you can go and see what these cover crop look like before you decide to take a plunge and, and do it yourself. Um, some other things that we've done, in particular in urban areas that are helping, um, the phosphorus ban, and of course with the coming wide ban here in Ottawa, prior to the state ban being passed, so that is helping. And then we also run a um, lawn lawn care seal of approval program, so to cooperate with the lawn care companies to make sure that they're doing their part to protect Lake Mac and keep excess phosphorus out. And we do this with a lot of partners, with a lot of grants. I mean, list them all and you can see who they are. So the bottom line there is we can't do it alone. Um, so this is the, kind of the last thing here. Some current projects that we have that um, you're probably, most of you are aware of the first one. We have a Great Lakes Restoration Initiative grant. Um, that's targeting critical areas with best management practices. And I have a map on the next slide to show you where that is. Um, so that's a grant we have currently for producers that have land in the East Field, Fillmore and Klein Hexel drain sub-watersheds. That grant is scheduled to end in June of this year. We have a lot of money that we can spend. Um, Mark, through the Conservation District, is uh, providing the technical assistance for that grant. And if you're in that area, Mark would be happy to talk to you. Um, we've got uh, posture set aside specifically for soil testing and then a whole host of other EMPs. And we are really interested in the practices that are going to uh, reduce erosion. And then we were just awarded um, a few months ago a new grant through the Great Lakes Commission Sediment Reduction Program um, to do similar practices. It's a much narrower list. We're just really targeting cover crops, conservation tillage, and gypsum application in different areas of the watershed. Um, so this map shows the two different areas. So for the first grant, it's just these small areas are the East Elmore and the Flying Hexel. For this new Great Lakes Commission grant, we can work within these larger shaded areas. And those areas were selected, if you remember back to Travis's presentation about the sediment samplers, those were the top three worst sub in terms of how much sediment they contribute. So that's where we want to focus our efforts on sediment or erosion reducing best management practices is where the data, the science has shown us that these sediment is coming from. So we're not quite ready to start that new project yet. We've got some details to work out, but if you know you have land in those areas and you're wanting to try cover crops, or some reduced tillage, or do some gy gypsum application, let us know, and as soon as we're ready to get that going, we will contact you. So any questions?